Hey folks, it's Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin, and hey, it's another edition of Worst Matches I Have Seen. Now, the usual criteria is talking about two matches per show. We'll see. Um, I've done five parts of this, and I've got enough material for at least three more. And let's be honest, there's been a lot of shit over the years, so this could be an endless topic. Um, so anyway, without any further ado, we're going to dive right into 2000 WCW. There's endless material there for bad matches. I mean, you could go sold out 2000 all the way through whatever. You go to Bash at the Beach 2000 with Hogan and Jarrett, even though that really wasn't much of a match. This, however, is War Games 2000, which takes place on Nitro, which had, I believe, and I remember right, this all gets clustered together, but this had Goldberg, this had Nash, this had Steiner, this had Vince Russo in it at one damn point, it had Booker T, had Sting, and it just had a bunch, God, it just had a bunch of crap, and it was, it was the one where it was the three-tiered cage, so you had the cage that you had to climb up, you had to use a ladder, not use a weapon as a ladder, as, you know, um, Rich Brennan said, climb up into the second cage, or up up to the second cage, and then get out of that, and then get up into the third cage, which had the title. Then you had to bring the title back down <clears throat> through the second cage, through the first cage, and get out the door with the cage. Now, the fact that Vince Russo was wrestling at this point was ridiculous. I don't know who made that okay. I don't know if it was Russo himself. I don't know if it was other creative. I don't know if it was the WCW brass that figured, hey, we've sunk this company to this point. Let's just put everybody in the damn ring, no matter whether they have the ability to wrestle or not. That's why all the Nitro girls were wrestling, and they had no business wrestling. No, I would have liked to have had a tussle or two with Spice. That's another story. <clears throat> it was just bad. This was just a cluster you know what of a match. It was just ridiculous and revolting. And my God, dear God, who thought this was a good idea to put this on Nitro? There was nothing wrong with trying to give away a cage match on TV. At least they didn't chuck somebody off of the thing like they did with Canyon. Um, I believe it's Slamboree 2000. At least they didn't do that. In the same building, by the way, where Owen Hart passed away just a year before. That was classy. Um, I believe at JJF Tweets pointed that out to me uh, on another show I did a while ago, so thank you for doing that. But yet, yeah, War Games 2000 was just awful. It was just god-awful. I mean, Goldberg looked like he was going to get the win. I believe Nash went in as champion. There were 15 title changes within a six-month period in 2000. Uh, so, I so I might be screwing that up, but I know I believe Nash was champion. And then Goldberg looks like he's about to leave. With the title, he he breaks the handcuffs, he breaks cold steel. They had no idea what to do with Goldberg and anybody at that point. They had botched him big time. Granted, Goldberg had just come back a few months before from an arm injury after he had, you know, tried to put his, to put my arm through the window, derp. You know, that's basically what he did. I mean, I know that he was upset, but dear God, that was one of the stupidest things he could have done. I mean, not even just for the company, because WCW was sliding out of control in 99 anyway. But the fact that Goldberg did that, just it, could, it he could have lost his arm. I mean, I remember seeing that on Thunder Cruise. For some reason, I was still watching WCW in 1999, at least that late. And I'm like, he hurt himself. And people, my friend's like, no, that's gimmick blood. I'm like, no, dude, he hurt himself. He banged his arm on there, and that blood flew out. Oh, it's a blood pack. No, dude, it's really hurt. And it and it turned out you check the internet, which was still in its which was still kind of growing in the bit of an a bit in its infancy at that point and Goldberg was really hurt and was out could have been out possibly nine months came back in five uh, but anyway Goldberg looks like he's about to get the win breaks cold seal takes everybody out that kind of stuff and is about to walk out with the title and then somebody kicks the door closed looks like somebody from the crowd did it well it turned out to be Bret Hart um Bret who had gotten a concussion from Goldberg at Starcade 99 wrestled a few times after that <laughs> which was a mistake. I really wish they would have given Brett the time off. Or maybe Brett didn't feel that the damage was that bad. I don't I don't know the whole story and I'm not going to presume to know it. But I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm willing to believe that Brett may have had some pride with his injury in not believing that it was that bad and also the WCW said no, you get out there and wrestle. You know, we don't believe you're that hurt. Or it was misdiagnosed and oh, he just he just got his bell rung even though he had a huge concussion. 
But Brett did that, kicked the door closed, and then Nash got the title and walked out with everybody, and everybody's celebrating. Yay. The match was shit. It was shit. I believe at one point Ron and Don Harris were even in it. I mean, no, wait, Chronic. All the tag team mixed together. Chronic was even in there at one point. I think they were Russo's hired thugs or something. It was bad. It was a really, really bad match. It was bad no matter who booked it. I don't care who booked that damn match. I don't care who greenlit it. That was a terrible match. However, you almost might need to watch it just to see what kind of train wreck it was. <coughs> but anyway, enough about that. We move on now to going back a year earlier. Sable versus Tori at Mania 15. Boy, this was a great idea. You had Tori as a stalker fan of Sable. <clears throat> and then she decides to wrestle her in one of the ugliest outfits I've ever seen. This weird gray or white tiger thing or zebra striped outfit leotard thing it wasn't that tori was a bad looking woman i wouldn't have ever dated her or you know gone out with somebody to look like her but she at least okay she was somebody different whatever challenging sable who never wanted to take a damn bump because sable wanted to land on her back only to get only to get further in the company which is what she did after she dumped mark marrow even though she ended up mark marrow for another few years after that she did dump him on his head during a sable bomb spot that was a great idea. Not that Mara was save, uh, savable by that point. But then you had <clears throat> this horrible match where it's Sable versus Tori at Mania 15, which is regarded as one of the worst Manias ever, despite having a pretty decent main event. <clears throat> now you have Sable, I believe if I remember right, Nicole Bass at one point interferes. Nicole Bass is basically what would happen if you took a gorilla, body waxed it, put a wig on it, and then put horrible makeup on it. Look, Nicole Bass is just hideous. <clears throat> she is. I mean, I'm sorry. She just is. There, there's, and I, saying she might even be a bit of a stretch. I mean, just, there, just, she was not a good worker at all. She was tall and looked intimidating, but I couldn't name one decent <clears throat> move, match, whatever that she could do. I don't know who the hell thought Dayton, you know, I don't know who the hell would have dated her in the company, but whatever. Nicole Bass <clears throat> was Sable's hired hired hand and helped beat Tori. It was terrible, and Tori even botched the whole Sable bomb attempt. Not that Sable could ever execute a good move to save her life. She could execute a move on her knees or on her back, or by having something put in whatever one of the orifices that she wanted to get at her advancement in the company. She never respected the business at all and only got into it to make money. <clears throat> and that's part of the reason I hate I hate Sable. So yeah, I'm going to stick by that. This match, though, was just an abomination. It was one of the worst matches of 99 easily. And this is from the same year that had a whole lot, whole lot of shit from WCW and ECW. Even though ECW was on a pretty good peak in 98-99 as far as their pay-per-views. There was way more <clears throat> good than bad in 98-99 despite the craziness. So anyway, that's what I'm going to say about those. I'm just going to leave it at that. So those two matches. So that's exactly what I have to say. Do you agree with what I said about these matches? Do you disagree? Do you believe I was a little too harsh on Sable? Too bad. That's my show. But, you know, make your own show if you feel I was too hard on Sable. Make your own show and t say about the good points of Sable. I'm sure she's not a horrible person. <clears throat> she just didn't deserve to be in the wrestling business. I don't care how big a reaction she got and big ratings. Because she didn't respect the business one bit or respect anybody in it. But... Like, share, comment, and subscribe. My Twitter link is in the description. It's been Real Aussie with John Ritlin. I am John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.